Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. The purpose of this review video is to go over your lesson from Thursday, April 23rd regarding nonfiction texts and objectivity. Together we will go through most of the slides in this Nearpod lesson and we will focus primarily on the objective versus subjective statements and the just the facts section along with your objective summary that you should have written. So there were several assignments that were embedded into this lesson that should have been completed. Here we are at slide one. Um, and I hope that you guys realized you could have clicked this play button down here to listen to the slide being read to you along with getting some extra information about the topic of nonfiction text and objectivity. So you should have read each slide carefully and listened to the audio. So this is our title slide. Just as a reminder, objective nonfiction is true writing with factual information. So objective writing can be found in textbooks, in manuals, news articles, anything that lacks opinion and includes just factual information about a topic. On the next slide, you were given an example. It was a very simple example, but still it was objective. It discussed families in Peru and what they eat and what they do as part of their recreational activities. Um, so this specific objective summary just stated, many families in Peru eat meat, fish, poultry, and vegetables. They season much of their food with onions and hot peppers. Recreation is an important part of Peruvian life. People like to listen to music and dance, and they also love to watch and play soccer. This small paragraph states facts about Peruvian life. It does not give any opinions, whether somebody likes it or dislikes it. It's just factual information. You were given yet another example about sharks. And the paragraph on the left in this slide just gave and offered information about sharks in a very factual way. It stated that sharks differ from other fish in many ways. Sharks have boneless skeletons made up of a tough, elastic-like substance called cartilage. Most sharks' bodies are bullet-shaped, which enable them to swim fast. Sharks have fewer young than other fish do. Shark parents do not care for the young. In fact, they may even eat their young. So this specific paragraph was objective nonfiction. It offered factual information regarding sharks without including any opinions of the authors or anyone else. So again, we don't know if the author who is writing this paragraph likes or dislikes sharks because only factual information is offered. On the next slide, you should have been able to determine the difference between objective writing and subjective writing. So on the left-hand side, we have the same paragraph that I just read to you about sharks that offered the objective nonfiction viewpoint. It gave factual information. However, on the right-hand side in this slide, we have the same factual information about sharks but with more emotionally charged words. For example, it states, sharks are the best fish ever, and they differ from other fish in many ways. Sharks are amazing because they have boneless skeletons made of a tough, elastic-like substance called cartilage. Most sharks' bodies are beautiful and bullet-shaped, which enable them to swim fast. These stunning creatures have fewer young than other fish do. Even though sharks are incredible, shark parents do not care for their young. In fact, they may even eat their young. How crazy is that? It is obvious that sharks are the most interesting fish around. So as you can see, the paragraph on the right-hand side offers a variety of emotionally charged words, and we can determine that the author of the paragraph on the right-hand side has a strong like towards sharks, whereas the paragraph from the left-hand side just offers fact-based information. And we can't really determine as readers if the author likes sharks or dislikes sharks. However, we can definitely tell that from our 
paragraph on the right. Your next slide actually highlighted those emotionally charged words that offer uh, some opinion-based ideas. In this case, we have a subjective paragraph about sharks because it includes words that indicate how somebody feels. If I say sharks are the best fish ever, you should understand that I really like sharks and I think that they are great. Along with using the words amazing, beautiful, stunning, incredible, and most interesting, those words definitely show and prove that the author of the paragraph on the right-hand side or the subjective paragraph has a strong like towards sharks. Whereas the objective paragraph just includes fact information, fact-based information, and doesn't offer an opinion whether somebody likes or dislikes something. So when we talk about objective versus subjective writing, there's a couple things that we have to make sure, especially when it comes to nonfiction. We do have to make sure that nonfiction writing is true and factual um, and real about real people, about real things. Objective writing, however, is just strictly factual. Subjective writing includes emotionally charged words or words that state or identify somebody's opinions or feelings towards something. On the next slide, you had a quiz to take. It was a short quiz. It was five statements. Some of you did not actually go through the quiz. Um, we were able to tell in our Nearpod reports that you just kind of skimmed through the slides. Remember, if you have a Nearpod, you're most likely going to have several different activities included. For this activity, you just needed to determine if the statement on top was subjective or non, sorry, subjective or objective. So if I have Snake Island is the strangest, most terrifying place on the planet, we would say that that is a subjective statement. The word strangest indicates somebody's opinion. Okay, so Snake Island, um, the passage that we have been working with all week is definitely terrifying to me because I'm scared of snakes. I really don't like them. So that is my opinion. However, if somebody else really likes snakes, they may use a different emotionally charged word. So the word strangest and most terrifying place or terrifying indicates somebody's feelings towards the subject matter. So it would definitely be a subjective statement because it includes opinions. The next statement is, rising sea levels help explain why the snakes on Snake Island are so deadly. So if we went back into the passage and we were able to find this specific statement, this statement is actually from the section titled, Just the Facts. So this is actually a fact about why Snake Island formed. So this would be an objective statement because it is strictly factual. It does not include any opinions. Here's our third. It says the golden lancehead snake is more venomous than the lancehead viper snake. Again, this is a factual piece of information and can be proven. So there are no words in here that indicate that this is somebody's opinion. This is a fact-based piece of information that is explicitly stated within the text. So that would be an objective statement or a statement that does not include opinions. Question four, the pirate theory actually sounds plausible even though it is not true. Now, when it comes to theories and legends, we have to think about this because some people do believe in theories and legends and they seek out to find the truth. So this might be somebody's opinion that a theory is not true or a legend is not true. So if I said the pirate theory sounds like it's okay, but it's not true, well, somebody who really believes in theories and legends can go against me on, on that because this could be my opinion. So we can say that this is a subjective statement. And then question five, suffering a bite from a golden lance head snake in your lifetime is extremely unlikely. This is definitely an objective statement because in the passage, it does state that these snakes are separated from humans for the most part. 
um, and they just roam the Snake Island. Okay, and if humans are not allowed to go to Snake Island, then it's very unlikely that a human should be bitten by one of these snakes. Okay, so um, we can say that this is an objective statement. Okay. On this slide, you should have watched this video that was embedded about objective writing because it definitely would have helped you when it came to your objective summary that you should have written for um, one of your activities that were embedded in this Nearpod. For this specific section, I hope you guys read the directions because up here it says, reread the section, just the facts within the passage. Brazil Snake Island legend meets science. Match each paragraph with its objective summary. So again, for this section, you should have reread the section, just the facts within the passage. It was highly suggested that you kept the passage open um, so that you can refer back to the text as often as needed. Now I do have the section, just the facts in its own document right here. So if we were to read each paragraph and then identify the main idea, we would have been able to match each of those paragraphs with their objective summary. Part two of this review will go over the matching that you had to do for each of these paragraphs and their objective summary.